Bridge for IBS to have Mr. T N Nine. Mr. Sharma, distinguished faculty, and friends. Uh, one paper was called Modern Economic Development, which basically focused on the global change from the Industrial Revolution onwards. And the paper on the Indian economy was called Indian Economic Problems. So the subtext that you heard was the world developed, India had problems. Now, if you look at it today, of course we still have problems, and the world has developed. But for the last 15 to 20 years, India has been, by and large, a good news story. The message from your skit, which I found interesting, um, from some of the numbers that your student representatives read out, uh, made it very clear that you are acutely conscious of the economic slowdown. It may be that this will affect your employment prospects. So you are directly concerned with what is happening. And the longer term issues that Professor Sharma very rightly raised are also very relevant. So my remarks will be focused broadly in these areas. Uh, and I'd like to start with Professor Sharma's first question. Will India ever be a developed economy? Um, we were last year in a $2.7 trillion system. Uh, the Prime Minister has put a target of reaching uh, $5 trillion by 2024. Uh, I think that's too ambitious. Um, but let me say that even if we double our GDP, capita GDP, not GDP, GDP would have to go even faster. Um, if we were to double our current per capita income from $2,000 to $4,000 in a decade, which is more than what we've done in the last decade, um, our per capita income would still be only where Sri Lanka is today. If we then double again for the next decade, that's 20 years from now, we will be where Malaysia is today. So you can see how much time and effort will be required to be where other countries already are. And if we want to reach the global average per capita income, that will take even longer. So not a question of being a developed economy at 30, 40, 50,000 dollars per capita income, but simply reaching the global average, which is about $11,000, will take you maybe a quarter century. Uh, that's roughly where Brazil uh, or countries like that are now. So this is a very long journey. And today we are the among the large economies in the world, if you take the large, 40 largest economies out of 180, 180 countries in the world, you take the 40 largest economies. These 40 economies account for more than 90% of global GDP. Now, out of those 40, other than Pakistan, which is number 40, we are the poorest as a country. So while it is right to celebrate our successes over the last 20, 25 years, which have created enormous opportunities for the people of your generation, your generation will have to work through your entire working lives to reach a point where you can say that we are where the global average is today. So in my mind, this is not a question that we need to ask. Uh, because it is a question so far into the future. Uh, we, we have to ask the questions about what we will do now, in the next five years, and build step by step in the same way that you build a cricket batting index. You set the foundation, you go to the middle overs, and you go to the small overs. I think uh, you have to start with the foundation. Uh, that brings me to the skit uh, that your students performed. 
um, which I think, as Dr. Sharma said, is a little behind the times. Uh, if you look at the statistics, um, the last set of uh, poverty headcount numbers uh, for 2011-12, I think, was the year. Poverty was down, as we defined it officially, poverty was down to about 21 percent of the population. And by a normal level of progression, it should be down to about 10, 11, 12 percent of the population today. That's different from being 50, 60 percent when we were your age. So, um, and then if you take the even more sharp question, how many people go to bed hungry? The survey is done periodically as to what percentage of the people do not get two square meals a day, the number is less than 5%. Uh, some, some numbers are down to 2%, 1%, but it's very low. Why is it low? Because you, in most states in the country today, you get rice or wheat at between 1 and 3 rupees per kilo, 1, 2, 3 rupees. Uh, some states is one, others is two, others is three, and it's very used for rice and wheat. And each person gets uh, five kilos per month. So a five-member family will get 25 kilos, so you can eat virtually a kilo of rice or wheat every day. And what does it cost you? It costs you a maximum of 75 rupees, which is much less than one day's wages for anybody in any part of the country. So with one day's wages, you can feed a family. So because of the right to food, because of the public distribution program, and because of the food subsidy systems that have been put down across the country, you don't have the kind of hunger that we used to have before. So I would say that that particular skit is, as Dr. Sharma said, a little behind the times. Uh, but then there are more challenging questions that face us. Uh, let me deal with the second question that Dr. Sharma posed, which is, will the structure of the Indian economy and society change? <coughs> nobody, from, uh, nobody from a business school goes into manufacturing, as far as I know. Most of them go into marketing, or financial services, or consulting. Uh, so you are part of a service economy. But something like 40% of India's working population uh, still works in agriculture. Uh, about 14% work in manufacturing, and the rest work in services. Now, the Make in India program, like the new manufacturing uh, policy that was there before, had set the target of reaching some numbers. The initial target here was 2022, that's been revised to 2025, which said 25% of the GDP should be in manufacturing, but it's been stuck at 70%, we've made no progress. It said a certain number should be employed in manufacturing, but that was not changed. It's labor-intensive manufacturing, which is what we need, is going slower than GDP. So Chennai is having a water crisis. Do you think that in the next 10 years, when we become the most populated country, circular economy could be a solution to our country? The mining scandals that took place on the corner of Water Water Foundation in Karnataka, and these mining barons who dethroned the chief minister, the Reddy brothers. Um, in water, the issue is that this country has more water than most countries. Uh, but we use the water very badly. We used to be water surface. Uh, we become water stressed. And by the time the zinc sector has done very much better. Uh, hotels have done better. So it has helped, and you can do that transition. We have not to leave it in many ways. 